It's about that time. First take. Thank you guys so much for being with us. We appreciate you. Skip Bayless, Molly Karam, Stephen A. What Gentlemen, up? a lot to get into today. So much news we want to react to, so let's get right into it. And we begin with the Clippers, who lost more than a game last night. Chris Paul suffered a fracture in his right shooting hand in the third quarter of last night's loss to the Trailblazers. And according to our J.A. Adande, Paul is likely done for the playoffs. Shortly after Paul suffered his injury, Blake Griffin suffered a left quad injury and is listed as 50-50 for Game 5. Stephen A., so I ask you, are the Clippers done? Yes, they are. Um, I'm, I'm, obviously, Doc Rivers is not going to admit such a thing. He's not supposed to. He's the head coach. Uh, he's the man running basketball operations. Uh, and not only that, he's an enthusiast. He's a high-end competitor. Of course, he's not going to take that position. The players themselves still have to play the game. Um, and clearly, it's one of those situations where um, they've got to believe in themselves. But do I believe they are done? Absolutely, positively, without question. Uh, as, and when I say done, I'm talking about their championship aspirations. I still think they have an opportunity to win this series. I still believe that as long as Blake Griffin can play, uh, that the Clippers could still end up winning this series in seven games. I don't think they'd win the next two. But do I think they could protect home court? Yes, I do. But their championship as aspirations have come come to a screeching halt. There is no way in hell that the Los Angeles Clippers are going to win the world championship. Uh, they're not going to have, they're not going to be able to do it at all. Uh, their chances were slim with Chris Paul, who's absolutely sensational. With him on the court for the Los Angeles Clippers, when he's on the court, they've outscored opponents by 553 points. When he's been out of the lineup, or off the court rather, they've been outscored by 202 points. That is a 755 point difference with Chris Paul on the floor. That's number one. With Blake Griffin, okay, and, 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 and Chris Paul in the lineup, they're the second-ranked offense in the NBA. But even when Blake Griffin is healthy, without Chris Paul, they're dead last. When you look at it from that perspective, you recognize his value, how extreme his value is. This is the quintessential point guard. He's an orchestrator extraordinaire in terms of running an offense and being an extension, the uh, figurative umbilical cord of the head coach. And the fact that he is gone is a devastating blow to this team. It's more devastating for the Clippers to lose Chris Paul than it is for the Golden State Warriors to lose Steph Curry. It's devastating and it's over for them. Okay, but wait a second. Did I hear you say that if Blake can play, that you give them a shot to win this series against these Trailblazers? Yes. Wow. I'm shocked by that because I give them zero shot. Again, I, I don't think Blake Griffin will be able to play the next game. So not only are they done for the playoffs, the, the Clippers longer term, I think they're done short term because I think they're going to lose on Wednesday night in L.A. and lose well, on Friday night in Portland and lose in six and be put out of their misery. And I think they're feeling a whole lot of misery right now. So I, well, I, give I think them, you, go ahead. If Blake Griffin doesn't play, I agree with you. OK, I'm saying if Blake Griffin, I'm saying if Blake Griffin is healthy enough where he can give you close to what he's capable of giving you, I believe they can win this series, but that's it. Boy, I was saying they were done as it pertains to their championship aspirations. Boy, you're giving Portland no respect then. You, you got less, almost less than zero respect for Portland and their chances against well, a team without CP3? I, would, I wouldn't say zero respect because I have profound respect for Damian Lillard and yeah. C.J. McCollum has been very, very impressive. But overall, I think they've overachieved by and large this year. They deserve our respect, but I believe that the Clippers are a more complete team than they are. And even without CP3, if Blake Griffin is healthy, they could beat the Portland Trailblazers. I just don't know if, how healthy Blake Griffin will be. Okay. Would it change your opinion any, given the... Uh, opinion of our Dr. Mark Addix, who's our ESPN analyst, who says that he was very surprised by the Clippers' pessimistic timetable and said that there is a new procedure called locking plates procedure, that if the fracture doesn't go too deep down into the knuckle, that you, you might have Chris Paul back in seven to ten days. In my view, even that wouldn't be soon enough. That would be too late. But let's, let's just do I the agree. outside. Ten days, if Chris Paul could come back, would you give him any I shot? Agree. No. No, I wouldn't either. I, I am so with you on the value of Chris Paul. 
No player in this league is more valuable to his team than Chris Paul is to his team. I'm with you. Even more valuable than Steph is to his team. Because Chris Paul is so many things to this team. He's the coach on the floor. He's the primary scorer. He's the primary distributor slash quarterback of this offense. And to me, he's the leader of this basketball team, even a little beyond a great coach in Doc Rivers. And to me, it, it's Chris Paul whose passes set up J.J. Reddick's opportunities to lead this league in three-point shooting percentage, even above Steph Curry this year, which is highly impressive. J.J. hit 47.5% of his threes to lead the league to Steph's 45.4. That's a lot to do with Chris Paul delivering the ball perfect spots, right, right in rhythm, right in sync, right in the shooting pocket. And then d d did Chris Paul set up passes, not make DeAndre Jordan Max money? I mean, God, doesn't he owe some of that to Chris Paul? I mean, $88 million over four years is remember De the De fiasco last summer. Wow. DeAndre Jordan without Chris Paul oh. is Dikembe Mutombo. That's, that's good. I like that. That's a good line, and I, I do agree with that. So we know that Jamal Crawford, the guy you love, you know, you talk about how he can boogie on anybody, sixth man of the year, but as you also point out, Who's their seventh man? Is it Jeff Green? Who's the eighth man? Is it Austin Rivers? Who's the ninth man? I don't know. Is it Paul Pierce? Is there anything left in Paul's tank? So, as you say, it drops off precipitously after Jamal Crawford. So they basically are playing six guys. And, and so we're back to it was a terrible break. You know, it looked like Chris Paul was trailing Gerald Henderson on a fast break and went for a steal with his left hand, went to swipe, and then Gerald pulled up a little quick and he jammed his right hand into the back of him and his finger broke. So, you know, it, it happens. And, and Stephen A., here's the point. And I know a lot of our viewers don't want to have to acknowledge this, but you know what happens every year in this league? And it happens in the NFL and it happens in baseball and hockey. The injury gods dictate the champion. Every year, I can show you almost any year where the injury gods, the injuries, they dictate who wins. You know, it, it, you, we can go back, we can do Westbrook and Durant getting hurt before the playoffs or during the playoffs for Oklahoma City. I, I can give you chapter and verse on my Spurs. Twice Duncan missed playoffs and they were out early. Ginobili got hurt on the last regular season night and they went out early in an upset by Memphis. Tony Parker was hurt last year going in the playoffs and they got upset by the Clippers. Tony Parker was hurt in game three of that, that game six finals, the Ray Allen finals, and he was a shell of himself from game three on but but I didn't whine about it I didn't whimper about it because it just happens and you just have to live with it I'm sorry for Chris Paul because this was it, it felt like his best shot to finally rise above the second round and actually play for the first time in his career in a conference finals but it happens and I don't know what to do about it except move on you have no choice but to move on, but just uh, to engage in revisionist history, for you to sit there and say that a spur, particularly one as significant as the ultimate spur, Tim Duncan gets injured and you didn't whine about it, that is not a recollection I have. If there's anything for you to whine about in life, even more so than the Cowboys, it would be an injury to a significant San Antonio Spur. So I don't know how honest you are okay. in that one, well, Mr. Skip The truth Bayless. is, but, 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 but go but ahead. Tim Duncan got hurt and missed two playoffs before you and I barely, um, we might have known each other, but we weren't doing this show yet because we got to go all the way right. back to like 99, no, 2000, I, I, 2001. I'm just, I'm just saying okay. I didn't know, well, but I find it hard to believe yes. that you weren't whining about okay. it. I really, I, I really do. I might have whimpered about Gin Ginobili, which was the last yeah. regular season yeah. game at Orlando. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I whimpered, right. yeah. maybe just a little bit. It wasn't a whine. Well, but, you can, you know, you, you, listen, listen, listen. We can pull out Webster's Dictionary, <laughs> and you can engage yeah. in different definitions all yeah. you want to. Yeah, you're but right. we get the point okay, now. Let's stop that. that nonsense. Okay, but, but my point but I, is, you're, you're right, but I can't, you, you know... <laughs> My heart doesn't bleed for Chris Paul because I remember last year it was Doc Rivers. Remember after the playoffs were over and he made the comment about 
Golden State was lucky, and, and he didn't mean like lucky, lucky, like they, they made lucky shots or whatever. He made they, meant they were lucky they had a magical run. They were pretty much injury-free last year, right? That's right. And, and what That's happened exactly along what the trail? They kept running into teams that had just lost their point guard. And obviously, well, Kevin Love was gone, and then Kyrie went down in overtime of game one of the finals. So it's a couple of lucky. things. A couple of things worth noting here. And I don't want to say that Doc Rivers is lucky because I have profound respect and belief in Doc Rivers. But I will say this. If the Clippers, as constructed, fully healthy, got bounced out before the conference finals, I think there would have been heat aimed in the direction of Doc Rivers, yep. at least in the court of public opinion. Okay. Now that's not a concern he has to have because we all saw Blake Griffin rubbing, rubbing his knee and we know that Chris Paul is out. So the combination of those two elements sort of grants him a reprieve. In the case of Austin Rivers, it's going to be real interesting to see him step in. I've watched this kid and I got to tell you, Skip, Doc Rivers brought his son onto the team and a lot of people were giving him some heat. Yeah, I like Austin Rivers. So do I. I, I like have. what I'm seeing from him. Yeah, and I and I got to tell you this too, this brother plays some defense as well. So Austin Rivers, if he can hit perimeter shots, yeah, okay, he plays some stout defense. And him spelling for Blake Griffin, he's going to have to be the Clippers version of Sean Livingston, to some degree, in order to offset the loss of Chris Paul. I don't know if he's capable of doing that. We're about to find out, but it's going to be real interesting to see what he does. I think those are the two elements that's worth pointing out here. But in the end, what it comes down to is that I hadn't picked the Clippers to come out of the semifinals anyway. Yeah. So the fact that Chris Paul is out basically puts that kneel in the coffin. Well, I, I'm, I'm with you. Austin, you're on, pal. This is, this is your moment, the next couple of nights, a couple of games. But I do think that now we're going to see the end of the Clippers as we knew them. Maybe we didn't love them, but we knew them. And it seems like now they're destined for some sort of breakup, that, that players will get moved. Maybe Chris Paul has played his last game as a Clipper. Is that possible? It's, enti it's entirely yeah. possible. I mean, Doc Rivers won't admit it because I don't think that he's come to that resolution yep. uh, because he loves Chris Paul so much. Him, Mike Woodson, Sam Cassell, and their coaching yep. staff. I mean, Chris Paul, the, he is adored. He is revered. Uh, by the Clippers, but I know for a fact that if Chris Paul were healthy and the Los Angeles Clippers somehow fell short of capturing a championship or at least coming out of the West yet again, that Chris Paul would not have closed his eyes and dismissed leaving Los Angeles. Once upon a time, he, he, he still loves L.A., but once upon a time, you couldn't talk to him or even think about yep. him leaving the city of Los Angeles because he loves it so much. But now he's he's so desperate to win the championship. If it meant going to Cleveland, yeah. playing with LeBron, he'd do it in a heartbeat. I, I'm with you. I agree. We'll see. They could blow it up, or maybe it buys them another year. But we feel terrible for CP3.